Good evening everyone and welcome to another Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 4th of February 2016. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia. When measurements matter, you can see large areas of rainfall across much of the eastern half of Queensland. Most of the heavier rain is centred in this central Queensland region near the Capricornia coast to the Wide Bay coastline. That is going to continue overnight tonight. Then tomorrow what we're going to see is the rainfall begin centralising around the... Capricornia to Central Coast and with Sunday's region and that's around about where it's going to stay in the North Capricornia to the uh, Central Central Coast region if you like. We're going to see a clearance from the south and a slight increase in rainfall up here in the north, although there's a fair amount of rain going on in the north at the moment. Some major towns have been quite unlucky so far and haven't picked up those major falls, a la Townsville. Yes, we know that Townsville hasn't picked up the rain, but most places across northern Queensland have started picking up some very decent rain, and Townsville itself will pick up reasonable falls. Now, we're not talking flooding-type falls for that region of the coast, but reasonable nonetheless. We are talking the possibility of some flood falls here for the central coast of Queensland between, uh, say, Serena and St. Lawrence. The possibility does exist, and I'll show you why shortly. Not to be totally outdone, the Northern Territory is doing quite well tonight too. Lots of shower and thunderstorm activity. Some um, some pretty heavy stuff on the out on the outer edges of that storm complex, uh, but generally moderate to heavy rainfall throughout the northwestern half or the northwestern portion of the top end, and that's associated with a fairly weak monsoon, but strong enough to hold some of this drier air that's coming up the uh, up the central parts of the territory at bay, and because of that dry air is moving up through the territory and the monsoon wants to hold its position here and doesn't want to give it up uh, we're seeing some fairly uh, strong convergence even though it is a fairly weak monsoon and therefore we're getting some strong thunderstorm activity and quite widespread thunderstorm activity through the northern extremities of the territory not too much to spruik about in the wake of tropical cyclone stand for the northwestern parts of WA. Some convective cloud occurring, which is quite normal, uh, but not too much in the way of rainfall out of that. There could be an isolated thunderstorm in embedded, particularly in some of this stronger and thicker cloud out here to the south, uh, to the east, sorry, of Telfer. But overall, it's a pretty boring pattern across the northwestern parts of WA, and that will continue now for the foreseeable future. Let's have a look at the synoptic chart. We can continue to see this disjointed version of the monsoon trough. It, it sort of goes out here into the southeast, uh, southeast Indian Ocean, dies in, out here around Australia, and it, it's really hard to figure out exactly whether or not we have a monsoon trough over the top of the north. Now, monsoon troughs are generally distinguished not just by what's happening at the surface. I mean, we've got northwesterly winds all through northern Australia, but it's also what's happening in the mid-levels, and what we currently have in the mid-levels of the atmosphere doesn't constitute a traditional monsoon trough. So therefore you can see here on the synoptic chart the bomb haven't joined this this blue dotted line up here with this blue dotted line here with the trough system across Australia. So that's not a misprint. It is it is on in fact on purpose uh, that they haven't been joined. So there's a slight structural difference here between the troughing that's over Australia and what we would expect to see in a monsoon trough. Further to the east, we have a low-pressure system up here in the in the Solomon Islands, and not expected to do much yet. However, there is going to be a little bit of interest here in around about a week's time. We'll briefly touch on that, but I want to focus a little bit more attention on what's going to be happening here. You can see there's a lot of lows. When you get a lot of lows like that and a big high in, in behind it, things tend to happen. So let's have a look at what's going to happen rain-wise. So tomorrow... The Capricornia coast looks to be the beneficiary or the major beneficiary of the rainfall. 50 to 100 millimetres possible through throughout the day in parts, possibly even slightly more than that in isolated pockets. Now, this, this sort of computer modelling won't pick up those isolated pockets, but rest assured there will be isolated pockets there with more than 50 to 100 millimetres. Now, the expectation is we continue to see scattered showers and thunderstorms all the way up through northern, northern Queensland. Very similar to today, if you like, with all those showers and storms I showed you on the radar at the start of, at the start of the broadcast. Across the Northern Territory, we continue to see this dry air penetrating northwards, and we also have a monsoon, still very, very weak, but good enough to create, once again, showers and thunderstorms across the northwestern, particularly in the northwestern region. Further north in the Arafura Sea, we continue to see the monsoon creating showers and thunderstorms, that dry air not pushing 
that far to the north. Across the northern Kimberley and eastern Kimberley, we're expecting to see scattered showers and thunderstorms and becoming much more isolated as we get into the Pilbara, fairly similar to today. As we go to Saturday, we can see this area of intense rainfall here on the central Queensland coast. It's moved just a little bit further north on Saturday, and we have uh, the possibility of some intense rainfall inland on inland of the Whitsundays region as well. Uh, more general shower and thunderstorm activity anywhere from pretty well Cardwell south to uh, about Rocky would be the cutoffs. Anywhere further south than that, we're looking at much more isolated activity as southeasterly winds tend to bring in a fair bit of stability and a fair bit more dry air. Now, on this trough line, there should be some... Uh, pretty interesting happenings. There will be a little bit of a low spinning up and moving away to the east and those sort of things tend to happen on a strong shear line or a strong trough line so we need to just keep our eyes open for those localised areas of enhanced what we call spin or vorticity because they can create a few hours of extreme rainfall where they develop or just south of where they develop so we will need to keep an eye on where those little enhanced areas of spin happen. The most likely scenario at the moment is that that little area of spin is going to be happening just to the south of Mackay, which means anywhere south of that will be receiving the greatest amount of rainfall. And that's what the computer models are showing here, 150 to 200 possible in areas south of Serena at this stage. But, you know, it, uh, it does depend on where that low spins up or where that, I won't call it a low yet, but where that little enhanced area of spin spins up. And if it spins up a little bit further north, then that real strong pocket of rainfall could move just that little bit further north and actually uh, hit Mackay or even as far north as the Whitsundays. So it is a complex pattern folks. Across the Northern Territory dry air is now pushing all the way to the north and we've only got isolated showers and thunderstorms now across the northwestern parts. Also dry air pushing west as well so the Kimberley region is starting to stabilise as well on Saturday. As we go to Sunday you can see a lot of stability pushing into Northern Australia here. Uh, it's quite unusual for February to see such a dry change pushed this far to the north. This high was never expected to be as strong as it is uh, and that's one of the things with highs. You, you can't really model their strength very well in computer modelling. Okay, across the eastern half of Queensland, once again, very much uh, a carbon copy almost on the Sunday of what we saw Saturday. So scattered showers and thunderstorms along the coastline with enhanced areas of rainfall near these areas of spin. These areas of spin at some point on Sunday should start to move offshore and we'll start to see a little bit more stability creeping into the region, but not before they should dump a fair amount of rain. Once again, the cutoff for anything moderate to heavy-wise is, is probably Townsville. Could be extended north to about Ingham, dependent, of course, on what happens along that shear line. Now, as we go to Monday... Uh, we see the whole system moving northwards, and it is starting to push offshore, though. So you see this blue area? It's actually off the coast of Queensland. So it's because these little enhanced areas of spin are now spinning, but they're moving away from the coast. So they're creating a lot of rain to their south, but just off the coast. And as we move further to the north, we start to see these southeasterly winds pushing in now. There's a fair bit of oomph to them at least in the lower levels of the atmosphere, and uh, they will hit these mountain ranges, and there's also a fair bit of moisture to them. And they'll hit these mountain ranges and create scattered showers further to the north here. Once again, the cutoff is around Townsville, but as we know in a southeasterly Townsville, it doesn't tend to cop too much. Uh, but it's certainly an interesting uh, situation over the eastern parts of Queensland in the next four days. If we look at the total forecast rainfall for the four-day period, there could be falls of two to 300 millimetres in total from uh, just north of Rocky here, all the way north to possibly Serena, maybe even Mackay. But once again, depends on those enhanced areas of spin and where they spin up. Uh, further uh, across most of Queensland, though, we're going to see really worthwhile rainfall. Most of eastern Queensland, we're going to see really worthwhile rainfall from uh, this system over the next four days. The four days after that, folks, it's all moving into northern Queensland and quite possibly a little bit weaker than currently, currently modelled because we could be seeing a low pressure system spinning up here in the northern coral sea. So let's talk about that and then I'll finish the broadcast. Alrighty, let's take a look at the European computer model here. What we can see is initially this first area of spin up around the rocky region, second area of spin up around Townsville. Remember to the south of that is where we're seeing rainfall, uh, not so much to the north. Uh, then we have uh, this uh, low pressure area just sort of hitting, sitting around the coastline here. It's very, very weak. Pushes eastwards off the coast. 
another low here and another low here we need to watch this because this entire trough system and you can definitely make out the trough system i hope uh, you can see this low 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 and low and low so there's our trough system so from that trough system, well, what we're going to see is one or two of these areas start to spin up properly. Now, the computer modeling is notoriously poor at this point in time when there's nothing there to create the right spots for these things to spin up on. So, please take this with a grain of salt and it will change. But at the moment, the most favoured areas, there's two locations that are most favoured to develop. This area in Vanuatu and this area in the Northern Coral Sea. These systems are too close to each other and therefore they will interact with each other in some way. If, the, if both of them form, the chances are this one will be the strongest. This one will drift to the southwest and it will pull this one into it. Uh, and we'll pull it towards it and so this system will track eastwards if this scenario was to eventuate now of course this thing could change we could not maybe this could be the dominant circulation in which case it'll pull this one towards it and this one will track to the west towards queensland but we just don't know it's too early to tell and it's not all it's all not happening until at least midweek next week and by then we'll have another update i'm sure so fear mongering aside and we just don't know what's going to happen out here in the coral sea it is going to be a complex pattern you can see here we've actually got three possible low centers as we go into days nine and ten so you know it's anyone's guess as to what happens but it's going to be quite fascinating as we go into midweek next week but then again you never know with the computer modeling as i said they're notoriously poor at picking this stuff up so nothing of this could form as well so that's also a possibility and certainly for the next three days the bureau of meteorology not worried about a single thing over the next three days however as we can see here the queensland bomb have mentioned the tropics are expected to become more active from mid next week so that's obviously the time where these lows could spin up along that trough and as i mentioned to you the possibility at this stage the more likely possibility is that the vanuatu system could get going but then again you know it's probably almost as likely that the north coral sea system will get going dependent on which one of those gets going uh, will depend obviously on where the systems could go the north coral sea one if it gets going well she's off to queensland by the looks of it uh, if the uh, if the vanuatu system gets going looks like it's going to pull the northern coral sea one towards it and bring it all down towards uh, new caledonia Thanks for watching, folks. We'll have another update for you. Now, remember, we're moving to Thursday nights for the public updates. However, if something does look like it's going to get going in the Coral Sea, uh, we will update you a little bit earlier. But at this stage, assuming that none of this takes place, uh, then we will update you on Thursday. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. And enjoy that beautiful rain.